Hey guys, in this video I'll be showing you how to prepare two basic gravers so you can start turning on the watchmaker's lathe. If we take a look at the wash step course on turning, it says that the graver needs to be at an angle of 20 to 30 degrees. You may find in other watchmaking books, they describe a graver angle of up to 45 degrees. I like using a 45 degree tool when a substantial amount of material has to be removed. You can take quite aggressive cuts and the tip won't break as easily as a 20 degree tool. In saying that, a 20 degree tool is great when you have to get into tight shoulders or when undercutting. So the two tools that we're going to prepare today is a 45 degree tool and a tool somewhere between 20 to 30 degrees. Um, the angle really depends on you, how sensitive your touch is, you know, how fine movements can you make because a tool with 20 degree angle will chip a lot quicker than something with 30 degrees. So um, when you have to resharpen these tools after practicing turning, try experimenting with different angles and find one that suits you the most. So to prepare these gravers, you'll need an India stone, a Kansas stone, sharpening tool holder, some oil, some gravers. I just want to mention that sometimes I come across eBay sellers trying to pass these gravers off as watchmaker gravers. These are definitely not for watchmaking, they're for hand engraving, don't get caught out. My graver of choice is the Velorbi WS 2mm graver. They come in different sizes. You can get um, from down to like 1.5 millimeters up to I think it's around four millimeters. And they also come in different shapes. Um, so this one uh, is a square, but there's another shape called a uh, lozenge, which is more rhombus shaped. And I'll cover that in a different video. These gravers are really well made. Um, they have extremely sharp edges. They're carbon steel. The W stands for water hardening and the S stands for shock resistant. I prefer these gravers uh, over the high speed steel, especially because you can harden them and this helps them stay sharper when cutting say blued pivot steel or silver steel. The only downside to hardening is that they're more prone to chipping. So moving on to sharpening stones. Here I have an India stone which is made from aluminium oxide. This is a fine medium stone which means it's got a fine grain on one side and a medium grain on the other. If you buy one of these brand new and pour some oil onto the surface, you might find that within a few seconds, it will have disappeared off the surface and seeped through to the bottom. To resolve this problem, I melt petroleum jelly. I place the India stone inside of a container and pour the jelly over the stone so it's completely submerged. Leave this until the jelly has solidified and then you can scrape off the excess off the stone. The next time you pour oil on the surface of the stone, you'll find that it doesn't get absorbed so quickly. So moving on to the Arkansas stone, this is a hard natural stone and will be used for final polishing. Um, it does require a bit of oil onto the surface. Some people will say that you don't put oil, um, I recommend that you do. This brings us to the tool holder. If you want to sharpen the tools by hand, that it's great. The wash step course is taught this way and it's a great skill to have. But day-to-day -day use of the lathe, I use the Bergeron Graver Sharpening Tool. There are other models out there, but essentially they all do the same thing, which is locking the graver at a specific angle and ensuring that the whole surface will be in contact with the stone, giving us the correct diamond shape. When we're sharpening our graver, we want our diamond to be perfect. So what do I mean by that? If you draw two axes, after sharpening your graver, your diamond should look like that. So your top and your bottom can run a straight line through and the two sides can run another axis straight through and it's perpendicular. This is the correct diamond profile that we're after, that we're looking for when we're sharpening gravers. What can happen though, after sharpening, you'll get a profile something like this. and this is incorrect. Profile like that, which is also incorrect. So when we're sharpening, we have to be mindful of what we're doing. We constantly check our work as we're going along um, because at the end of the day, 
we want diamond perfection. So before we start sharpening the actual face of the graver, we need to sharpen these two cutting edges, this one here and this one here. What you'll find is that these um, surfaces have very fine ridges. When left untouched, it will result in a lower grade finish on the object that you are cutting. We sharpen these on a medium and then the fine. To sharpen the graver, we insert it through the back of the version tool holder and set it to our desired angle. And lock it down gently with the thumb screw. Then we're going to ensure that our graver is actually perpendicular to the tool. As you can see, it's on a slight angle. So next we look at um, the hole that we just inserted through the tool holder and ensure that the graver sits nice and straight. And then we apply some oil to the stone and start to sharpen our graver. This graver is the 45 degree graver. So here you can see our new face being formed at the bottom of the diamond. It's always important to stop and check your work as you're going along to ensure that the diamond is perfectly symmetrical. And if need be, just make some fine adjustments and continue sharpening. Diamond is coming along nicely. It's important to remember to keep your stone well oiled while sharpening. After a while, you'll notice a black grit buildup left over from the graver. A very easy way to get rid of it is simply pour some oil over the top, use your finger, and it will suspend all the grit in the oil. And then once this is done, you get some paper towel or a rag and lightly clean the stone. Eventually after excessive use, you will need to either clean the stone out with some sort of white spirit or alcohol based solution and then reapply your petroleum jelly and continue working as described. So once it's clean, reapply your oil and continue sharpening. So now coming to the last stages of sharpening the graver on the medium side of the stone. I'll just clean off the diamond and show you the tip. So it's looking pretty good. Give the stone one more clean. And a good clean on this side. Let's flip the stone over. And put a bit of oil. Sharpening the graver on the fine side of the stone won't take as long as it did on the medium side of the stone because you're not introducing a new angle. So here, check it again. It's looking very nice. So now I've finished sharpening the graver on the fine side of the stone. What I'm going to do now is that there's a little burr on these two edges, which I'm simply going to take and put a flap and drag it across. So put it flat. So now what we're going to do is pull out our India stone. We're going to put a drop of oil, very faint. And we're just going to go back and forth like we did. So here it is, the finished 45 degree tool. So once you completed this one, move on to the next tool, which is the 20 to 30 degree tool and finish that one off. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to make the five basic cuts in the watchmaker's lathe using your new gravers. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or there's something that you wanna say, feel free to leave it in the comment section below.